Allô? Congo Boko. Eh, ma'am, na vumbuka, na telama, eh, ni meno. Ladies and gentlemen, all living species on this planet Earth, in this beautiful planet Earth, share the same resources. My grandmother, Mama Lukula, once told me, grandson, if you want to be successful in life, wake up before the sunrise, you will achieve your greatest potential. I was this little dark chocolate little boy. I asked her, why should I wake up? To do what? It's too early. He said, no, son. Every morning I will wake you up so we can go to the river, take water for the family before the elephant or rhinos poops in it. I say, yes, grandma. Every morning, Mama Lukula comes to the room. She say, Mwana, Vumbuka. Everybody repeat after me, Vumbuka. Vumbuka. Telama. Telama. Now, when I say Telama, that means everybody gonna get up. And you may say out loud. Here we go. Let's try this. Here we go. Tell them out. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Have a seat. We're going to do that one more time. Tell them out. Have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen, with 86,400 seconds, those seconds will present an opportunity to better ourselves or to better our community. My question to you, where did you get your water from? Do you know the human body is 78% made of water? But only those who are willing to wake up before the sunrise will take advantage of the blessing of life. But instead of doing so, we spend so much time complaining about things that does not matter. But do you know right now as we speak, people are dying on this planet Earth because they do not have drinkable water. My question to you again, where did they get your water from? <laughs> ID? Little, maybe in the comfort of your living room. Do you know on this planet Earth, we take things for granted, but a lot of people are dying. But who am I to tell you that? My name is Dr. Chikaya Misamu. I was born and raised in the Congo, Central Africa. My dad has 14 children with 11 women. <laughs> he did not waste 86,400 seconds. I'm not asking you to go make babies tonight. We well, am asking you to stop complaining, to do more and to give back, and most important, to answer that call. When that call comes tonight or tomorrow, will you answer it? When adversity comes, would you face it? But instead of looking at problems as challenges, we, still, we should immerse, look at our problems, has the opportunity to grow. Every time we grow, we change the world. Where there is water, again, there is life. We have 86,400 seconds to make a difference. Every second who present an opportunity, not only to stop complaining, to give back and answer the call. You have the right to complain. It's your right to complain. Ladies and gentlemen, it is your right to complain. But maybe you can complain for one hour. But remember, you still got 23 hours to stop complaining, to do more for your community, to give back, and most important, to answer the call. 
Jackie Robinson, the first black man, was once told in his contract to stop complaining. Even people spat on him. Can you believe that? Somebody spit on you, but you can't complain. How about Jesse Owen? While facing segregation and discrimination in America, this gentleman went to the Berlin Olympics in 1936. Not only won, no one gold medal before he answered a call. He did not complain. History. It's a sum of many events that led people to rise above all. In 1997, the civil war broke up in the Congo. Instead of me killing my own people, I started to save people's lives because my grandmother once told me, grandson, vumbuka telama. I was born premature. Seven and a half months premature with a sickle cell disease. At my birth, the doctor told my mother that I will not live one year. Consequently, my mother suffered from postpartum stress disorder. She rejected the baby. But my great grandmother told my grandmother. Which means this kid one day is going to become somebody. So I grew up with the notion of knowing that one day I will become somebody. Every time I was sad or crying, my grandma kept reminding me that one day you're going to become somebody. Watch the way you think. Because your thought becomes your word. Your word becomes action. Your action become your behavior. Your behavior become your character. What you think is what will happen. If you spend the time complaining while well, you got 86,400 seconds to, to make a difference. What is our purpose on this planet? Why are we here? Why are we going to do with all those knowledge that we're sharing? We must answer that call when it comes in, not to walk away. In 1997, instead of killing people, I started saving people's life, not knowing that one day I will be facing atrocity. I have witnessed women being raped, children being taken away to become child soldiers. I see dogs eating corpse. I smell the burning flesh of human being. I see children being molested. But I know one day I will become somebody. One day the militia broke into our house. The fight starting, I was stabbed in my behind. My mother tried to help me. She too was not spared. I witnessed before my eyes the rape of my own mother. And they burned the house. When the flame of the house was coming up, my nose, I remember my grandmother's words, Moana Vumbuka, son, wake up. Telama, get up. With blood and tears, I took my mother to safety. And I have to escape the war. I end up in Belgium, asking for political asylum. It was America who took me. There, I learned how to speak English. Drained the U.S. Marine, went to war. And I was top of my class of the School of Infantry. Here's a person who just learned how to speak English not too long ago. He was top of his class. Because I remember those words my grandmother told me, Vumbuka Telama. Once I got my citizenship, I planned to go back to the Congo in August of 2004. Once I, go back to, once I went back to the Congo, ladies and gentlemen, I faced a government who feared me. They put me in jail. When I tried to escape, I got shot at, tortured. In a Congolese jail, once you're new prisoners, the rest of the prisoners have the right to beat you up. 
But once they knew I was an American GI, they told me, we're going to keep you alive. So one day, you can go to America. So your story can be a guide for someone else's life. 2004, in a jail cell, I called 911. The emergency number here, equivalent to 112. With the help of the FBI, the Pentagon, the Marines came to my rescue. When I went back to America, I wrote a book. And I believe what Nelson Mandela said. He spent 27 years in prison. He didn't waste no time. He did not complain. And Nelson Mandela said this, and I quote, education is the strongest weapon we have to change people's way of thinking. Watch the way you think. I graduated my doctor's degree. I was in the pursuit of the American dream. I opened a million dollars business. But guess what? My ego and fame got the best of me. When my mother called me many times, I was not picking up the phone anymore because fame and ego took over me. Every time my mother called, I turn the phone down. I keep saying, tomorrow, mama, tomorrow, mama, tomorrow, mama. And that tomorrow never came. Three years ago, this time, I received a phone call that my mother passed away. I went to deep depression. I went to darkness. I couldn't work anymore. I bankrupted my business. Adversity came once. Adversity came twice. When I was still grieving the death of my mother, I did not answer the call of my grandmother. She too passed away. And six months later, my grandfather followed. I am so grateful for those people who have given me all this life, all this knowledge, so I can stand here before you to tell you, you only got 86,400 seconds to be thankful. Where there is water, there is life. During darkness, shine the light. Look for hope. The hope starts right here in your head. You must believe that the sun must rise. Instead of complaining, I asked myself, you need to go back to Africa to ask for forgiveness. I went back in Boko, Mbelo, down south, Brazzaville, and I sat down in my mother's grave, crying, crying. Mama, Lenvo. Mama, Lenvo. As I was sitting there and crying, and I heard my mom's voice, Mwana, son, Vumbuka, wake up, tell Mama. I got up, and I ended up here in Germany. <laughs> Remember, I'm from the Congo, and I grew up in California. From dry heat to humidity and to cold. When I opened the door, I tried to go back into my room. When I remember my, my grandmother's voice, like Musafa talking to Simba, the land king, son, if you want to be successful, wake up before the sun rises. And I remember my grandmother still going to the river barefoot with a bucket of water on her head and on her hands, I have no reason to be ungrateful. And I started running. And I saw this old man, swerving, old man, try to clean his driveway. And I tried to give back. When I asked him to give me the shovel, he said, how knowing? How knowing? I said, what is that? I said, dude, give me the shovel, man. Let me, let me help you out. And I took over the shovel and started cleaning his driveway. The guy asked me, would you like coffee? I said, no, I don't drink coffee. 
I'll drink tea, but I will do it when I come back from my work. After I finished my running, the man is standing outside where it was snowing with a cup of tea. I didn't know for how long he was there, but this man gave back. Every morning now, when it's snow, the old man and I, not only we clean our driveway, we also clean the, the neighbors. My question to you, what would you do with those 86,400 opportunities that you have? Would you answer that call? And that call came in one day because I made a promise to myself that I will never, never again do not pick up the phone. I will pick up the phone. My dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And I took him here in Germany. And today my dad is well because I answered that call. Ladies and gentlemen, get your cell phone out. Turn the light on right now. Let's answer that phone call. Get your phone out. Turn the light on. And the waves are high. That is everybody in this room. That's the commitment you must make. Starting today, ladies and gentlemen, you must answer the call. You got to stop complaining. You must give back and do more. When there is water, there is life. Cheers. Thank you so much.